job people listen to us for nonsense and we give it to them in spades nonsense 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 some would even say on our best days malarkey braves defending champs boy it sure would be a shame if there was no season next year and we were just still the defending champs also this guy that got hit how old is he uh 46 what a loser just sissy man you just got punched in the face by a 90 year old man come on dude i'll bet doc is like the sinbad of ames iowa because what people I didn't realize, I thought it was just a doc thing with the corn jokes. Iowa people love corn jokes. Well, you know what they say, knee high by July, baby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that's killing in the Midwest right now. I'm sure when that hits their ears, they're like, that doc, he gets us. Doc, what do I love more than anything? That's right, an angry football team. I prefer to think of Warsaw as like a battle of who's the best saw, right? So you have like a sawzall, you have a skill saw, you have a hacksaw, handsaw. It's just a battle of saws. Welcome to the Spaghetti Junction Boys podcast. We had to switch it up on the ones and twos on you today. Uh, Q is out in outer space with Elon trying to, you know, orbit the Earth, see what's going on. So uh, I'm hosting today, yes, as the sensual voice, Doc, uh, here with Ben. And we got a little Looney Tunes action going on for those uh, listening and the YouTubes. I've got Yosemite Sam, and Ben has the wall from Roadrunner and Wiley the Coyote. Yeah, Doc, it's good to be here. I mean, thoughts with uh, Q as he's doing what Big Bird never did, which is entering space and... Uh, you know, uh, good for him. Good for him. <laughs> yeah, let's wish him a safe return. I should be back next week. But uh, let's get it started off here. Uh, Spaghetti Junction Boys is brought to you by Manscaped, who's the best in the business in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped Performance Package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million men worldwide. That is over 8 million. You know what? Uh, that trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. Uh, type in SJB Atlanta for 20% off free worldwide shipping. Again, that code is SJB Atlanta. All spelled out. We don't say the second T here in Atlanta, but there is one, so figure it out. Uh, but that is SJB Atlanta at manscaped.com. Is that the read? That's that it. That is the read. That is what you need, people. Hell yeah. Well, let's, Doc, let's start here in Atlanta. I just, I want to give a shout out. You got the cap on uh, to the Braves overcoming a 10 and a half game deficit at the start of June to win the NL East. Uh, the largest or either second largest deficit they've ever overcome to win the division. And these guys have won a lot of divisions. So it is significant accomplishment. That just goes, I think, you know, you you see it in sports all the time. You come back from a championship. You may be a little complacent, lackluster. But then when you know how to win, which is, I think, a skill in and of itself, when you know how to win, you can turn it on and win again. And they did that here in the latter part of the summer. Uh, So I know you heard some local radio stuff about the win that you wanted to have a few words for, but I just wanted to start it with, a big congrats to the Braves. Yeah, big congrats to the Braves. I think what this is the five, fifth year in a row they've won the division. Like they are solid. So there were some boomer takes here in Atlanta. I'm not going to go scorched earth, but 680 the fans, uh, 11 to 1 o'clock show kind of got on the Braves a little bit for party hardy in there. Uh, they were ripping them for double fisting in the locker room after beating the Marlins two nights ago. And they were ripping them for, you know, doing what anybody that hikes to have a good time is, just put the old empty beer case on the head and walk around like a robot. Nothing wrong there. These guys, like you said, just came over a – unprecedented kind of games back a la probably money ball you know with brad pitt and jonah hill but let these guys relax you guys want you want them comfortable going into the postseason they're about to have a week or two off with the kind of waiting for the wild card to kind of iron itself out you want them to relax you don't need them sitting there getting all twitchy and freaked out you know waiting for that next game let them relax a little bit these guys clearly know how to turn it on 
you know, I think the other crazy stat I heard was actually was a cool stat was there was one sacrifice bunt in the game that clinched the division for the Braves. And that one sacrifice bunt was the only sacrifice bunt they had all year. If they did not do that sacrifice bunt, they would have been the only MLB team in record recorded history to not do a sacrifice bunt for an entire year. So these guys like to swing. They know how to play baseball. Let's give them a break. So what? You want double fist a couple beers? These guys are in their 20s. Like, these aren't, you know, 54-year-old guys out there have two beers and then they're hung over for four days. These are, you know, prime athletes. Let them have some fun. I just yeah. couldn't believe the takes I was hearing. To the bunt point, I was talking about that with my father-in-law. I don't think that's the last we'll see of stats like that. Like, the bunt is kind of going away. So, I think mm-hmm. – I think in the next five years, we will see a team go 162 without a sack bunt. Um, just with the DH now and the analytics and all that stuff, I think teams are going to be going for that long ball more and giving up the bunt. Um, you know, I'm disappointed in 680 for that take for a number of reasons, like you mentioned. But also, 680 as a supporter and broadcaster for the Braves has to see the bigger picture. The post-game celebration was sponsored by Coors Light. You want these guys enjoying the sponsorship uh, and all that entails and promoting the Coors Light beer. So a 680 goes to sell to sponsors to get uh, for the Braves. You want the Braves to be actively engaged with who their sponsors are. And there's no better way than shotgunning beers and putting Coors Light boxes on your head. So you'd think the people at 680 would see the bigger picture in that regard, too, just from a business standpoint. Uh, and that is Ben's business corner. I, I like it. I mean, we need more of Ben's business quarter. So that is a mental note being made. We're bringing that <laughs> one back. Uh, but yeah, it's just like, I know I've had my fair share of boomer takes on this show, especially uh, <laughs> regarding Antonio Brown and his kind of exiting of games. But it, it was a win. It was a win. It's not like they lost and then got hammered or had like a night out in Vegas or something. They won the pennant. You're allowed to celebrate. It's a good season. Yeah, I understand. There's all this hype built up. Go back to back. I get it. You know, the Braves are good enough to go back to the World Series and win it again. And acting like you've been there, yes, is a good thing. But let's be honest, they're not there yet. They still have three more rounds of the playoffs to go till they get there. So let them just have a little break, enjoy their time. And I I just, I was just, honestly, I had to stop the car when I was driving and listening (laughs) because I was just like, Seriously, this is the take you guys are going to take? Like, I, I just couldn't understand it. Uh, amen. And also unrelated, but you brought it up. I think I think you ended up being right on Antonio Brown. You, did you see he exposed himself in Dubai <laughs> in a pool? Um, so maybe yeah. maybe you were onto something there. <laughs> he could use a chill pill. The Braves yeah. are fine. Let them <laughs> Let them have a couple of cold silver bullets. I think they'll be okay. Amen. Amen. Well, with that, like, uh, let's get into what the people want to hear. Let's make them some money and go uh, into gambling dance. You want to get us started with your first two picks? Absolutely. My first pick here, we have got the Chargers. I like Chargers minus two this week. The Chargers are on the road and they are going to Cleveland. It's a one o'clock game. Uh, Cleveland just isn't playing teams very tight. I mean, they're playing teams tight this year. They're kind of giving up some big plays in the fourth quarter. uh, And they're just not really holding it together and keeping that kind of end of game closeness unless they're playing the Jets, let's be honest. Uh, But this is not the Jets. Justin Herbert looks really good. He's coming off of those banged up ribs a couple Thursday nights ago against the Chiefs. So I really like the Chargers here. Uh, it dropped from minus three yesterday and at the open to minus two and a half, which I like even more. I definitely see a touchdown win here. Herbert's just going to like light up that secondary. They don't need the run game. They're just going to be throwing all day. Uh, pick number two. Yes, I did just rag on the Jets for being a bad team. But you know who is a worse team? That is a Teddy Bridgewater run Miami Dolphins. I hate to go in on the Dolphins like this when Q is in outer space. But I just see this game being a one-point game. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater that Thursday night coming in for two after his uh, 
Taylor of the Crypt hands. That's the last joke about Tua I'll make. <laughs> but anyways, I think that this game is a lot closer. I think Brees Hall has a really nice running game against that Miami defense. Uh, they're going to be a little bit kind of worn down. Those guys are running around like crazy. Brees Hall hits hard. So I, I really like the Jets to keep this one close and it'd be a one-point game. So I'm taking Jets plus three and Chargers minus two and a half. I like those. I like those. I'm staying away from the NFL again, though. Um, I didn't do any picks last week. I just uh, – life got in the way and and uh, didn't really see a lot of lines I liked, whereas that's com- the complete opposite this week, especially in, in college, which is where I'm staying. I want to give both a warning and a uh, maybe a preview to the listeners. I think my picks – I'm either going to go 0-5 or 5-0. and I feel like the lines <laughs> I saw on the college side were so looked so good um, that just I didn't know what Vegas was doing, and I'm either way right on that or way wrong. So with that being said, uh, we'll start with uh, Q's team, even though he's in outer space. Ole Miss at Vanderbilt, um, you know, really strong win last week or, or against Kentucky. Um, maybe they should have lost that game. That's a debate for another time, but it's a win's a win. They looked really good doing it, especially on the ground. Vanderbilt, I just, you know, they're going to be kind of the punching bag for the SEC. And I see Ole Miss. uh, I think Lane gets these guys with a lot of energy and they're not going to come out with a clunker. So give me Ole Miss minus 17. Uh, UCLA and Utah. I don't often like turn my attention to the West Coast games. But UCLA really turned my head on Friday night last week. Uh, That quarterback they've got, super athletic. He's going to keep them in most games. Um, And I just – I don't know what to think about Utah after what we've seen from Florida since that game. So give me UCLA plus three and a half. I like those. Um, So pick number three for me. I'm going to the Dirty D, baby. That is Detroit Rock City. Give me the Lions plus three. The Lions have been playing everybody tight. They're actually uh, number three team, I believe, against the spread this year. I don't know. I'll have to the interns on it. I'm looking up here. They're number six team against the spread. But they're still 75% against the spread, so they're keeping games tight. Uh, we know that they do not have a defense. I mean, their defense cannot stop a nosebleed. But they're going against an anemic offense, and that is the New England Patriots. Uh, the Patriots just cannot score right now. Uh, their their boy uh, Danny Dimes not being able to throw, you know, shit out there, and he's just injured. So give me the Lions plus three. I just I don't see how this game gets to a blowout or a shootout. I mean, this thing stays neck and neck, just like the Lions have been playing their last three ga- uh, four games. They're actually. Uh, Only loss, I believe, by one score in every single game they've played this year. Uh, We'll have to get a little bit more research from the interns on that. But anyways, the next pick I'm going to give you here. This one, it threw me for a loop. I'm not going to lie. I usually see these two teams, and I stay as far away as possible. I'm not going to touch them with a 100-foot pole. But when they play each other, weird things happen. So I'm taking the over 43-and-a-half in the Jacksonville Jaguars hosting the Houston Texans. You guys might be thinking, Doc, why the heck would you do that? Those are two terrible teams. They are just awful bottom-of-the-barrel teams. Well, when two bottom-of-the-barrel teams get together, they're going to have some weird shit happen. That's just what happens. You want to know who's 75% in hitting the overs this year? That is Jacksonville. 75% hitting the overs. These guys are scoring a lot of points. I'd like Jacksonville to put up 42 by themselves. So they're just looking for one score out of Houston. I know that seems like a lot, but uh, Trevor Lawrence really coming into kind of the throws there in Jacksonville. Their offense is looking nice. Their defense could step it up a little bit, even though they have had a shutout this year against the Colts. Uh, but I, I just see this kind of being one of those weird no defense games. Offenses go off. You see a thousand yards of offense between the two teams. Uh, I really like the over here, over 43 and a half. I like that. I like that. I also, on the Lions, because of fantasy, I've watched a few of their games and mm-hmm. like sneaky, exciting games. Like, I, I just, a real kind of a, what do you, the punch drunk type team. Jared yep. Goff, especially like they just seem like they're just kind of 
athletic enough to stay in things, but never coordinated enough to really take that next step, which is just makes for exciting football. Um, but like I said earlier, staying in college, uh, I'm a dogs fan. I think I made that known, but I just don't think this Georgia team is what we've seen in the past. I thought this line against Auburn was going to come out in something in that like 17 to 21 range. And then when I saw it at 29 and a half, I just really was shaking my head. Uh, I don't like Stetson is prone to mistakes, which keep games close. The defense is a little bit soft up the middle, which is not what you want to see against Tank's, Tank Bigsby. Um, yeah, it's at home, but I just see this being like a 17, 14 point type game uh, with net, with it being feeling kind of close until like that late fourth quarter or uh, uh, there. So I, 29 and a half is just a ton. So give me Auburn plus 29 and a half. Um, and then in the uh, Red River shootout, Texas, Oklahoma, I don't really, this is the one line, you know, that might be the outlier in my five and O or O and five feelings, but I do believe Oklahoma is better than what they showed against TCU. I think Sonny Dykes at TCU it, it, like is kind of sneaking up on people. He's doing a lot of exciting things on offense and probably snuck up on Oklahoma players who might've come into that game thinking that they could just kind of throw their helmets out and get a win. Uh, but they are not the Oklahoma of old. So I think they'll come out and respond against Texas rivalry game. I expect it to be close. We don't know if Quinn is going to play for Texas. Texas, though, not exactly world beaters as they showed against Texas Tech. So give me Oklahoma plus seven. Interesting. Um, I like both those picks, but Oklahoma's rush defense was exploited last weekend. Gave up 360 yards on the ground to TCU. Yeah, but, but got, Venables has got to turn that around. That is his like pride point, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you think he's got to put a foot in the ground and just, yeah. you know, just, you know, earmuffs for the kids, ladies and gentlemen. He's just got to motherfuck everybody on that defense and just be like, either you make a tackle or you fucking sit. I'll yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be a sooner in practice this week. That's for no. sure. God. So I, I just think they respond. Absolutely. So pick, we are on to our whammies. These are our multi-unit picks. Uh, we always say two units, but I've been known to sprinkle up to five units on these picks this week is a five-unit pick for me. I, I think this one hits with a freaking bolt of lightning. Primetime, Monday night. I know everyone gets freaked out about primetime games. Chiefs Raiders, give me the over. Don't even think about it. 51, give me the over. Don't think about it. You know, Patrick Mahomes is going to put up 35, so you got to, uh, you know, hope that, you know, Davey Carr over there puts up three touchdowns. They've been doing that. The Raiders have been able to score. It's their defense and their kind of uh, – crunch time decision making that has been an issue and then fumbling in overtime against the freaking Cardinals, which I had to watch and cry about, but that's okay. You know, we're, we're going to bounce back from this. Uh, just two prolific offenses going at it. Uh, I, I mean, Vegas is also sneaky top, you know, five team that hits the over at 66.7. Uh, that tie did not help, but they are hitting the over 66% of the time. So I like that there, and the Chiefs are hitting it 50% of the time. I could go into the points per game that they're getting into, but we'll just leave that one to you guys, keep it short and sweet. Give me the over here, 51. I like that. I like that a lot. I would I, I would follow that um, for sure. But I, the line that struck me as the most confusing all week, and maybe this is one I'm either way right on or way wrong, was Tennessee LSU. It's going to be 11 a.m. in Baton Rouge. It's going to be a sleepy type of stadium. You know, Jaden Daniels for LSU got kind of banged up last week. Brian Kelly said he could have returned to the game. Um, but I think Tennessee is a legitimate playoff kind of contender team. I don't, I don't think they have the depth to kind of go all the way, but I think they could at least win the East. Um, and maybe give Alabama a real run for their money in a SEC champ or Ole Miss in the SEC championship. Um, but I just like a three point spread. I think that I think Tennessee beats them by 17 plus. I don't see LSU keeping up at all. So give me Tennessee minus three. Yeah, you give me Death Valley at night. That line makes yeah, sense. Yeah. The eleven o'clock has no sense. I mean, you got homeboys deer hunting out in Ellis in Louisiana right now, and they ain't gonna be ready for an eleven o'clock game. And Tennessee coming in like 
knowing it's a business trip that helps them. The 11 a.m. start helps them so much. Um, they're just going to come in and get in and get out and move on. If it were at night and they had to sit in a hotel room and then yep. step into that atmosphere, I'd feel different because strange things happen there at night. But like 11 a.m., forget about it. Tennessee's going to be the one that shows up and blitzes them, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think that kind of tough game they had against Florida that they pulled out just really kind of uh, hits them, gives them resolve, you know, gives them the ability to kind of gut out tough games. Uh, just to give you guys the overall record, should have hit you with this on the front end, but my bad. Uh, I am 12 and 16, so not great, <laughs> but. You know, four and one last week. So I had a really good week starting to see the NFL board clearly sticking in the NFL. Two and four in whammies. Q uh, had a tough week. I believe he was one and four last week, which takes him to 15 and 14, or 15 and 13, excuse me. Uh, but he did hit his whammy. So it's four and two. And Ben with no picks, that puts you at eight and seven still. So, you know, yeah. getting pretty nice. Yeah. One, one and two on the whammies. Uh, you are seeing college football really well, though. You're seven and six. Q is eleven and eight, and I've given up on college football at <laughs> three and seven. So, anyways, I uh, hope you guys take our bets to the house. We know we had a short one here today. Uh, just wanted to make sure we get you the picks out before the games tonight and this weekend. Uh, so feel free to hit us up on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, the website, YouTube, let us know if uh, we should start fading our picks or what you guys want from us as listeners. But to close out the show, thank you to our sponsor, Manscaped. Uh, they are the number one pre-engineered tools for your family, Jules. They just came out with the Lawn Mower 4.0. This is the trimmer of the future, and it features a edge-cutting ceramic blade to reduce grooming incidents and accidents to their advanced skin care technology. The Lawn Mower 4.0 is waterproof. and also has a 400K LED light to help for more precise shave. If you're anything like me, you somehow still have shaving remnants from 2016 somewhere in your bathroom. I know I do. Uh, well, thanks to the waterproofing technology, say goodbye to the mess on the bathroom floor. Say hello to a cleaner, fresher shave. You get that by typing in man at Manscaped Offers. Type in SJB Atlanta, spelled out all caps at manscaped.com. That's for free shipping and 21, 20% off. Uh, so let us know kind of on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at SJB Doc. Ben is not found on the socials, so don't even try. And then Dark also web. Dark web. Yep. He's a Silk Road guy. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, SJB Atlanta. That's our handle for Twitter and Instagram. Uh, have a good weekend and keep him shooting. Ben, anything? No. Go Braves. Go Braves. <laughs> Thank you.